Oh, look, it's Ricardo. He just wanted to be put in the museum. He didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Well, for developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And uh, this is kind of interesting. We're actually in the same room. Yeah, for the first time since we started doing this. So we'll see how this goes. I will say about the space combat section here, this is probably my favorite one that we did. I yes. think this is the best space combat level that we have. It's also the best looking. Yes. I think the one of the reasons it's the best is because uh, it has that center mountain. Oh. <laughs> We're going to be doing this again. Well, this means we, if we cut this video, we won't get to do it on the next video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I think this is the best because uh, it has that mountain centerpiece, so it gives you a, a, a focal point right. for navigation without having ceilings and walls that could kill you like in the, uh, the one that's a sphere. Right, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really good level, a really good looking level. Uh, it's got a better story than on any of the other levels, because you're actually fighting the thugs. I think that's the storyline anyway. I don't, by the way, uh, uh, I, I think I might have miscredited the design of this, but uh, if, in, just in case I didn't say before, the designer on the Space Combats was Leslie. Oh, okay. Uh, she did all the Space Combat, all the racing, and a couple levels that I mistakenly attributed to Brian Algar. Now, is this one of the things that you found out? As you told me earlier today that you just saw Leslie. Was yes. she correcting you on the fact that you were doing? No, she did. She hasn't even seen this. Oh, I okay. actually was asking her which levels did you do because I don't want to credit. Gotcha. <laughs> to the credit wrong. Uh, and it turns out actually, I like uh, the your level, level four. Yes. Was Leslie's. Oh, okay. And I said it was Algar. You know what? I'm doing this wrong. I'm supposed to be attacking the big ships. Also, Joba was Leslie's. Oh, okay. So two levels that you were on, Leslie designed, and we completely forgot about it. That's unfortunate. But at least we're correcting it now. Yes, a very, uh, very terrible error. And right. clearly hurt her feelings a lot because she didn't know about the joke. But maybe she does now, and then when she listens to it, she'll right, be Right, exactly. All right, I'm supposed to be attacking the enemy ships, and I'm totally lost and not attacking the enemy ships. Go for the yellow... Right, uh, right, figuring that out slowly. Oh, uh, okay. Slowly figuring this out. Like that thing over there is probably yeah. supposed to be attacking. Do it. Oh, it's flashing red when you hit it. Is it? Yeah. That's an interesting thing to talk about, sort of. Uh, uh, oh, it's very... I'm almost dead. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, maybe we need more ship upgrades. Hope not. It's uh, uh, it's something that it's it's easy to overlook, but very important is that that hit lighting. Right. When enemies take damage. Uh, having made games for a long time, it's actually really hard to cue players in on when they take when when the enemies are taking damage and when they aren't. Yes. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it took six games in the Ratchet franchise before we had enemies with shields, because it's so hard. To, to make the game correctly so that people know whether something's taking damage or not. I agree. Uh, you know, and you gotta, you know, you have particles flash uh, uh, at, the, at the destination. We flash the stuff red. You have to do a ton of cues and a lot of work just to get people to know that, yes, it is taking damage. You are not failing. Good, you killed one. Yeah. I, clearly, the, I should be shooting them from a distance and not getting right up in their face because that's when I die. That's when I get murdered. It's really refreshing to not have to play and be able to critique your performance well, for once. Too bad there's not going to be much to critique because I am excellent at Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> well, the next level after this is uh, widely considered to be one of the hardest levels in the yeah, game. Yeah, I know. And that's uh, actually, when we get there, hopefully we'll be able to talk about it a little bit. But there was um, that's probably a big point of pride for me, that it was uh, a difficult level, but it... People didn't really complain so much about that it was difficult. They were pretty happy, despite it being one of the more difficult levels in the game, which that's I was pretty happy with. That's a good point, because um, a lot of times, uh, especially as a, a designer watching kids fail in the focus test, uh, failure wasn't a good thing. Right. Uh, but in that level, most of the players would die repeatedly, but not feel too bad about it. Right. And it's... Um, well, we'll get more into it when we get into the yeah. game, but... 
for now we could talk maybe about space combat. About how wonderful yes. space combat is. I'm having a really hard time finding these ships. Uh, to go left. And then, right there. There it is. Oh, dude, you own this guy. Oh, shit. He's, he's All right. down. Then go that way. Yeah, there he is. There's a little yellow guy behind you. I wonder why there's a little yellow guy behind I don't you. Know. It's really hard when there's these, you know, when you're in full 3D, it's so hard to guide the, the player towards what they need to find because they might be going in the right direction, but it might be just off camera above them or it might be just off camera below them. And it, it's hard to do with 3D radar. I know one of the big things that Moo was talking about in, uh, I don't know, one of the games is he really wanted to do a 3D map so we could do more complicated levels. And it's, uh, it's a weird thing that your levels can only be so complicated because of how you can convey to the player in the map that if you're doing a, a multi-tiered level, it's so hard to do maps for multi-tiered levels. Right. So you're not allowed to really do multi-tiered levels unless you have a good way to make a map to show the player what's going on. And at which point you might be spending more effort than you really want to on a map feature. Right, exactly. Uh, and that's why uh, very rarely in Ratchet games will you see overlapping paths because uh, uh, it was just against the rules because all we had was that 2D top-down map. Right. And people would get really confused if we ever did overlap. Let's not do another one. Uh, I had fun, though. Yeah? You want to do another one? I want, I want to at least see the challenges. All right. Hold on. Wait. What uh, happened? Go back. There we go. New challenge? Yeah. Let's go for a new challenge. Fight the bandits or locked. Oh, wait. Two's open. Angela. Oh. For 25,000 bolts. How many bolts do we have? Um, I don't know. I'm doing this. Because you know why? I don't want to lose in my level. <laughs> so I'm going to get as many bolts as I can. You mind a little bit? Can you, just for my curiosity, see what's inside there? Is there like a bolt or something? No, of course not. Why would, <laughs> why would there be? Maybe there is in one of the other missions. Oh man, these guys got hit points. They don't just die. You're doing pretty good. I always do pretty good, man. Always. There's never been a point in my life where I didn't do pretty good. Except for when you died the first time you tried this one. Well, that was failure of design. I was confused. <laughs> I didn't know what I was supposed to do. So what you're with. saying is Leslie failed in designing this level? Yeah, that's, basic, that's exactly what I'm saying. Her fault, entirely. All right, well, just Tony said that, not me. I just want to put that out there. That was Tony Garcia. I can give you his email address if you want. It's always, I mean, that's the other, that's a big secret of being a programmer in game development, is uh, always blame your problems on design. And if you're design, you always blame your problems on programming. Well, it is always programming's fault. Well, yeah, I mean, because if it's not fun, because the design was pure, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Things aren't fun. It was a great design, but on, the implementation failed. On paper, failed. it was a ton of fun, but then when you got it, you Right, exactly, it yeah. <laughs> but as a programmer, it goes the opposite way. You did the best you could, but you know you the didn't have material you didn't have stuff. much to work with. I really do like this space combat level. It is beautiful. The, the rain is really cool. Uh, how do you think they did that rain effect? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just one. Uh, it's just being uh, an effect that's drawing over the camera. So it's the scrolling it, texture that's over the camera. I'm so it's not sure the particle like, box? No, I don't think in this level they did the particle box. I think this so, level's too big. So uh, just to give you a, 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 a primer on how we did rain in Ratchet, we had two methods for doing it. One was we would draw, uh, we would draw square textures in front, of the, uh, in front of the camera and animate them. And then another way was to actually have rain particles falling out of the sky in a big cube that followed Ratchet around. Right. Uh, and that was uh, that was the way that we did it for most of the games. I think up until Ratchet deadlocked. But uh, in this one, you think it was the screen. Well, the effect. the advantage of doing the big particle box is that you that way you're creating individual raindrops and they can collide with the ground and things so like that. Can be but since there's no actual ground here and there's nothing that you ever have to collide with, you can get away with just doing the scrolling texture because you don't because you're never going to get. Closer or farther, you're never going to see it interact with the ground, that kind of stuff. Well, you know our, uh, our rain box actually did clip the ground. Oh, really? Yeah, the rain would go right through the ground, but what they would do is they would randomly generate 
splatter particles ah, on gotcha. the ground. And since you can't really tell where an individual raindrop is going, it would uh, it would it would look like the rain was leaving drops. It was pretty clever. I think TJ made that. The, the this rain. is a ton of bolts. <laughs> twenty five thousand. Well, I got twenty five thousand for the last one, and this one's going to give me thirty thousand if I so succeed. You're, you're killing the big ships again. Uh, one, big ship. one big ship. It's the ghost ship. Ooh. Why is it a ghost ship? That's just the challenge. Well, shouldn't it be alpha out if it's? It's probably ship? going to the sea. Look at that. It's disappearing. Oh, look at that. It's invincible now. You can tell because it's not flashing red. That's right. Wow, dude, they're, they're all over your ass. Oh, and they made the they made the dot smaller. No. Oh. Uh, I don't know what oh. it is. There's something going on. you got ten missiles, dude. It's alpha out now. Okay. I can't shoot it yet. I'll shoot it again as soon as I can. Well, then, you know, use your missiles. You've yep. got ten. Don't tell me how to play. I just think maybe you should use the resources available to you to do the job. It's on the other side of that mountain. I don't like that. Speed up. There you go. No, but now I'm right up on his ass. Now I'm going to pass him. Slow down. I don't think you can slow down. No, you can't. Yeah. I just wanted you to waste time looking for a way to slow down. Another oversight on design. No slowdown. <laughs> Star Fox had a slowdown. Why don't we have a slowdown? Star Fox had a lot of stuff that we don't have. Well, like for the fact that their entire game was made as yeah. a space combat game. <laughs> it's amazing how many more features you can do when you're actually just making a game with space combat. I'm going to die. If I die, then we're done. But if I don't die... Because if I die, that means i got to get upgrades. And... Oh, no! Wrong button! Whoa. I went to fire my missiles. That was not what I was doing. Way to go, Tony. But you know what? You were never anything but flawless. Hey, I haven't died yet. I do like that you're confident enough about that that you said yet. Hey, well, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't want to look like a fool if I do die. Fool in this episode that we won't air because it's a bonus episode? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So we probably will hit it. I know. When do we ever cut it? We always we do that. We're anywhere. saying, like, this is stupid. We, this will never see the light of day. And then we put it out there because we're done. It's probably a good thing that this will be the last one because I've run out of things to say about space combat now. Come on. I got some compliments on the uh, speeding up. Uh, oh, really? Effects that we did. Yeah. So I could do that during this part. Maybe. But people want to see me play and be excellent at Ratchet and Clank. I think that's... People don't want to see you play, but they oh, do enjoy seeing me play. I see. So that's what they're, they're saying. It's great when we don't watch Mike. Right. That's exactly what they're saying. Yes! See? Look flawless, at that. Success. Flawless, flawless victory. Uh, I think I'm done. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is a race. Uh, uh, Ace Bunyan. Huh? No, don't do the race. I don't think I got it. I don't think I got the... All right, let's go All to right, well, the Snivlack. For, for a potentially bonus episode That's of right. Developer Commentary, I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And uh, check you out next time. That's really lame. See you next time is what I should say. <laughs> that was perfect. 13 minutes. That's actually yeah, an episode. That. That's yeah. a good length for an episode.